With regard to the economy, the issue is it's not, we talked about a crash. Well, it's because the market has gone sideways up and down, but basically it hasn't been crashing. Uh, we are looking starting at April, March into April, the market was supposed to be rolling over. And instead, it's been supported and it's been, been held up. That creates a problem, a very big problem, because it takes the word crash out of the picture and it puts the word collapse in. So because the time patterns don't change, now the char- I'll show you, some, show you some charts in a few minutes, but th- what happens is, is time points don't change. It's a matter of how it gets there. And so what ends up happening, it's going to be very terrible for the U.S., economy for the people of the US and mostly for the people of the world because it's going to come so quickly that no one's going to be prepared for what's about to happen. That's the problem I see. It's not going to be just a crash where it keeps crashing down. It just collapses. It's like the Twin Towers. All that's left is dust. And So you're saying this time we're not going to have this step-down approach where it continually falls. You're, You're saying that this is going to come straight down. Now, last time you told us about QE4, where the Fed is going to implement QE4, is this still going to happen with QE4? Well, QE4 is going to still hit. I, I still believe that's going to happen. It's just not yet. The time pattern, first you have to have the collapse. And I, it's supposed to be crashes down. And so what we've had, and let me, let's step back and look at this for a second. Let me just show you some charts and then we can start with that and then you can kind of, we can progress as we go. I don't know if you can see this, but here, here's, uh, here's a, a chart, which I gave to my, you know, this is a subscriber from the uh, chart from subscribers. And I, I took out the details of the time points, but what we're looking at, there's 20 years. Okay. So let's step back and look at it. This is 20 years. And what we're looking at here. So we got the Dow, NASDAQ, London. Switzerland, Canada, and Germany. Okay, the point is, what do you see there, David? What, what, do, you, what do you see? Do you see, see the one, two, three? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so you can't say that markets are not tied. They're all tied together. All the world markets have three tops. Step back at this. Look, tw- this is 20 years. Now, I see that we hit the three tops. Okay, well, no, or- we hit it. So when I did the interview, so we with, hit the top and it's right, coming down. Right. So when I did the interview with with uh, with True News on on the twentieth of July of twenty fifteen, that was a cycle high for the for the, I think it was like, uh, the Nasdaq. We called the exact day. Uh, the the Dow topped a little earlier, but it doesn't matter. It's just it was right. But the Nasdaq top was for the exact day. But based on our cycle counts, we we're using the Nasdaq. But from that time point, we've had. Now let's look at this a little further. Okay, so that was a 20-year cycle, right, David? Now let's zoom in. Here's two years. Okay, so let's look again. Same charts. We've got the Dow, NASDAQ, London, Switzerland, Canada, Germany. Same charts. What do you see, What do you see, David? So I see pretty much the same thing. I see the three points, and we are at the top again. Right, so you'll see that last point number three, which is right there. Am I correct? Yeah, on point number three, You'll see that that's over here, and then you see another one right over there. Point three basically shows you that that was July of last year, 2015. Okay, and so all that's happening is the markets are rolling over. Okay, that's all that's been going on is the markets have been making lower highs. That's a bear trend. There is nothing bullish about this, about any of the world stock markets. Okay. So when you have it, and those are what called triple tops. So as a trader, David, you know, what is a triple top? You either, on a triple top, you either succeed, and what does it do? It goes higher. But if it fails, it collapses. Okay? So there's a, there, so there you go, triple tops. Okay? So, so now you've got triple tops on the 20 years and on the two year. Now, so we've got, so now let's look at, what's the one of the biggest stocks in the world? Uh, Google. Apple. Yeah, Google, I just heard Apple, that they right? uh, passed Apple. Yeah, they're both the same. They're both big. Both the same. So, so, I, so let's, I did this just for you because I wanted to show you and your readers, but check this out. Here's Apple. What is that? That's three years. Okay. All right. So this, this was last year. One, two, what does that say, David? Three. That's right. Look at the bottom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. 
So we have triple top failure. And then this was when we, this was the top we called for the NASDAQ. And that was last July. Markets collapsed into August of 2015. We had a cycle low in August. And then what happened? Well, the Shemitah was here. Everybody thought the markets would collapse. And guess what happened? We had an up cycle. So we knew Shemitah of 2015, which of the biblical, you know, everybody's expecting a market crash never happened. Why? Because the smart, the cycle from August of 2015 into November was an up cycle. Well, what is that, Dave? Look at that red arrow. That's a what? A bearish lower high. You, you got it? Bearish, bearish lower high. Drop into another bearish lower high. And then today, Apple had uh, a terrible report. And guess what happened? Apple dropped today, and it actually took out the August low of last year. It took out the August low, okay? This is not going to be pretty. The markets are going to collapse, and we're on the verge of it. We're not, I have done a video before, we're not we're months away. We're not weeks away. David, this is around the corner. It's going to be bad. Now, I wanted to, before you ask the last question, this is a critical chart here. This is called, this is where, see, cycles give me something that nobody in the world has. It gives me direction when you look at a chart. So, so you look at this and you say, okay, well, those are technical charts, but what, what is the direction? So you look at a cycle because you can see forward. You, you can see what's going to happen because you know the cycle, which direction the cycle goes. So you know if the cycle is going to go up or down. That's what a cycle tells you, okay? So then we're going to take the cycle, up, and we're going to look at the cycle, but now this is really cool. This is, remember the chart pattern I showed you of the, of the 20 years? The, the, the 20 year chart here on all the world markets. Okay. So we're, we're going to take that and then we're going to, there's what's called the jaws of death pattern on the Dow. This is the Dow. I don't think you might have seen this before, but I've used my videos. So this is the crash of 2001 to 2004. How long did that take? Approximately th three years. Okay. And then, then we went up and then we, then we crashed into approximately Two years. It rose back up into the top, the top that we call the exact day on the July on the July twentieth, and from that date the markets collapse. The markets have been rolling over, rolling over. So Apple, who we just showed you, everybody's sitting about here. The problem is, it's supposed to happen in less than a year. So, so you're saying it's coming very soon, right? So, so here the one thing that that cycles don't give me, David, are price projections. So I have to use chart patterns to project how low it could go. So the Dow, you know, a target for the Dow is twelve thousand, possibly from where it is today, to a minimum of six thousand on a low. Now, could it go to six thousand? Maybe I, I don't know. But I look at it, it's like is rather than it rolling over and making look like this on the way down, it's been holding. And what happens is you still have a cycle. So when we've done an interview with Greg Hunter, with you, all I knew was that I still, from that interview time point, we had a low time point and we haven't reached that time point. And no, it, actually, you said it was in the fall. It's not in the fall. And by the fall, it's all over. So all of this is over by the fall. And if you look at that time projection from July to July, we're about a year and we're in May right now. So you're saying it's going to come straight down soon. Right. This is, and, and so it's like the Twin Towers just collapse. And then when all that's left is dust. So while all this is happening, where is the price of gold going to go? Because right now we know that JP Morgan Chase, we know that Goldman Sachs, they were bearish on gold. Now they switched their position, they're bullish on gold. So what price are we going to hit when this happens? Well, Better question is to look back at the cycle like I illustrated to you. Again, I can't project price, but I can tell time, project the time points like I just illustrated, okay? So until my time points arrive into this summer, you better be careful to sit in that market right now anywhere in the world. It's extremely dangerous because the time point hasn't arrived yet and the chart patterns, so the patterns we use, are, couldn't be uglier. And everything I just illustrated going back 20 years and two year and three year patterns and everything I showed you, show me where we're wrong, where we're wrong. That's a bear trend. Lower high, low, triple top and bear, triple top, 
triple top on the on the 20 year, triple top on the two year, and lower lows, lower lows everywhere. What is gold? The best word over all the years that I've done is the one word you can give gold. It's insurance. It's insurance. Okay, but people always email me, hey, you know, what about mining stocks? What about ETF? Everything's paper except gold and silk. Okay, but but it's insurance. It's insurance to keep the people that make all these stock markets move. It keeps them in check. It keeps it's God's money and it keeps the world in check. When the world becomes out of balance, gold fixes the equation. Okay? And so there's, when we did an interview, you know, the cycles we were using, we had a, a we had a low in 2014. The Jub the one air, we were looking for a price explosion in 2015. The mistake we made, and this is something we talked about in Greg Hunter's interview, was that the Jubilee year added an extra year cycle in it. So it doesn't matter it's December to December. The point was it's a 12-month cycle it added. And so because of that, I scheduled an interview specifically with Future Money Trends on December 3rd. We did this like a week or two prior to December 3rd of 2015, scheduling it on that day, saying I expect to be there a low. So, so on that day, I said today will be the low for gold. And, you know, we just should have seen it at 1045. And look at gold. Today's trading at 1270, I believe, right in that range. Uh, you know, today being you know May May 12th. So you know, gold gold 1045 was the exact low. I believe I don't think there's anybody else in the world that actually called that low. I think we're the only ones. Uh, and since then, gold has been going up. Now I wanted I did this chart for you, David, to show you this. Okay, so 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 check this out. Okay, so this this is uh, okay, so six years. So from the year 2010 to present. You got it there? Yep, okay. I see it. So number one is $1,900 gold. So that was a 1260 day, 12, uh, 1,267 a day cycle we counted from the prior cycle. So we, that's what we called the top on that one right there. And that was 1,267 days prior to 2008. So that was the top. And then, since then, you'll notice gold's gone down. Okay? But check this out, okay? So this line here is the 600-day moving average. So when I was in Greg Hunter's interview two months ago, it shot through that 600-day moving average. And I, my words were, blue skies for gold. And to this day, we, we are not wrong. Why? Because look at it. I knew that that would hold because it's never, look at this, for four years, it's never been above that 600-day moving average. It's holding it like a rock. After the Greg Hunter interview, it came back and tested it for one day, and that was and that and that 600-day moving average is $1,211. And then since then, it rose up, and all it's been doing is making a flag formation or a pennant. It's making a pennant formation right here. There's a second line that I drew, and it goes through the middle here, and that's a 50-day moving average. Okay, well, a 50-day moving average is what holds a bull market, and you will notice that that. 50-day moving average hold, has been holding it like a rock ever since we called the low right there. I can, I can zoom in on it. That 50-day moving average has been holding it like a rock. And that's, that's the, uh, the, the, the second, the blue line, the blue arrow, sorry. So gold and all these technicians, you know, I don't want to mention names, but there's people out there that have been calling. I, I actually got an email from somebody just this weekend, and this, he actually raised an analyst calling for $700 gold. Like, seriously, like, where do these people come up with this stuff? Like, for, uh, under a, for it even to go down under that 50-day moving average or the 600 days, is never going to happen. So when they're calling for, like, ridiculously low prices, all they're doing is scaring people from buying the one asset class. That's insurance. Everybody buys insurance for your car, for your house, for everything you own, but they don't want to buy insurance against their value you know of, of what their portfolio is worth of, of what their at of their assets are like how could you not at least take 10 to 15 percent of your net worth and own physical gold and silver because gold's going to appreciate by a factor of 10 minimum so if i had 10 percent of my assets in gold okay 
And if it went tenfold, which you'll easily do, maybe higher, okay, but minimum of 10, so 10,000 on gold from where it is today, okay? So I, w I would have preserved my wealth because I took 10% of my net worth, held it in physical gold, watched the economies collapse and everything else go to go to whatever, but my gold went up tenfold, so I preserved my, my, my wealth, today's wealth, with only a 10% stake in, in gold. So, so for, for people to not hold gold, to not hold gold physically, you know, they don't understand economics. They, they, they believe the, the 252 year story. And the reason I use that number is because it's a 252 year cycle that ends this year. And it's the monet, it's the monetary cycle of paper. And it's supposed to end this year with a, you know, collapse. So I, I hope that it gives you a, a good idea of where my thoughts are on gold. And then I want to, and then, and people say, this is the best part. People say, oh, you can't use technical analysis. You got to throw it out the window. Are you kidding me? The charts I showed you, like, could those be any more perfect on the cycles that I illustrated to you? Then oh, let me give you one even better. Here's, here's a technical chart on gold. Okay. Check this out. Right here, I'm going to show, just show you this first. What is that, David, as an analyst? What, what kind of chart is that? Looks like a flag a, to me. It's a flag formation, right? Check this out. Okay, so all that happened from the cycle low on gold in the year 2000, you had, tr you had true price discovery into our cycle high of $1,923 gold. And then what happened was you had the flag form, okay, so there's from the, from the top to here, all that happened is a flag. Perfect. Not like you can't, you can't use technical analysis. Are you kidding me? That's a perfect flag formation, okay? And right, and, and the breakout point is right around 1250. So gold's already broken out. It broke the flag pattern. We're just waiting a little bit longer. And guess what happens next, David? I, I've, I've basically, I'm looking for new all-time highs for gold of this year, 2016. Why? Because look at, look at this, look, look at the red line that I drew there. The red line, you see that? That's just basically, this is called price meeting time. If you remove the manipulation, all it is is true price discovery. It puts gold at a new all-time high. talk about silver for a second and the reason is because silver is a reason gold hasn't broken out yet let me let me answer that silver follows gold and then it takes over okay so let's let's illustrate on december 3rd gold bottomed silver did not silver and i did an interview and i basically on that interview with future money trends in december i said silver is the lagger so it bottomed second well guess what happened two weeks later silver bottomed at 1360 Okay, guess what happened in January? Gold took off. What did silver do? Eh, kind of. It lagged. It's been, it's been the lag, it's been the lagger. Okay, but it, but now you got a golden cross. You got the 60, 50 day cross of 200 days. So you got a golden cross in gold, golden cross, which happened on gold in February. Uh, and this on silver, it happened in March or April. So, so finally you got the golden crosses on both of those already occurred. Okay, but silver, Remember the uh, flag formation we had here? Here you go. There's silver. Have we broken out yet, David? Uh, looks like um, looks like we're very very close to it. Almost. But barely, no, we haven't. Hit, we got to take out eighteen. We got to take out eighteen with a conviction. Okay, so. You take out 18 with a conviction, that'll take out 1300 with conviction, and you ain't ever going to see cheap prices on gold ever again. So do you think gold is going to step up or go straight up? Vertical. Not, to, not tomorrow, not just yet, but very soon, because the Shanghai Gold Exchange won't let it go down. The Shanghai Gold Exchange is basically the intermediary now that's going to transition. You'll notice ever since they went live. And the interesting thing was on the S on all the world markets. This is actually very cool. I don't have the chart here, but go back and check. You'll see the Nasdaq, S and P, um, all the world markets. Okay, all the world markets. When did the Shanghai Ch Exchange go live? April nineteenth. 
April 19th, specifically, remember, to me, everything's a day, everything a day is reported. What happened the next day? All the world markets topped. Head and shoulders. See so how to head? Okay, and then the other day, the Dow rose 200 points. So what did it yesterday? It dropped 200 points. Why? Because it made a right shoulder on the dailies. So you got 20 year, three triple top. You got a two year triple top. And now on the dailies, you got a head and shoulders. Just finished. So do you see gold taking off this year? Do you see it increasing quite a bit? This year, yes. You know what, Jim Rickards actually, I listened to one of his interviews and I don't really pay attention to him. I didn't really know who he was too much, but I, I did listen to a couple of inter interviews and he actually said something very interesting. When this happens, and I, and I fully agree with what he's saying, when this happens, what you're gonna see is it's gonna explode. And it actually, he didn't say it's going to explode. I see that happening. And I, and I see an immediate flight to safety. The world will wake up to precious metals. And guess what gold and silver will once again be? Money. Okay? Because they want insurance and they want money. Okay? So it's both. Basically, it's number one insurance, but it's also money. Okay? And so immediately, you'll see everything dry up. Because how much gold? Do they get? Think about, you know, a few, uh, the internet people shut their sites down. They're going to hold off for, for a few weeks. Uh, and, and everything else left is just going to disappear. All of a sudden it's gone. So then people putting in orders and his words are very specific. He goes, you're going to call your dealer up. He says, sorry, we're sold out. You know, you call up the coin dealer. Sorry, we're sold out. You call the mining company. Sorry, we're sold out. It just, that's what's going to happen. And so, you know, people have orders in, but you know, are they going to get filled? I don't know. Maybe eventually, maybe. I, I don't know. But, but it's, I believe it's going to, this year you're going to have, you know, remember 1980? Uh, I don't know if you remember that, but 1980 when gold was going up to $800, what happened there, right? You had people lined up to go buy gold. I know that because I, I, I experienced it, okay? I saw people lined up to go buy gold. That's called a gold rush, okay? We're going to have a gold rush this year. And when there's a shortage of gold, prices are going to go up. That's correct. That's correct. And then, and then the premiums are be the, the bigger issue because people will, will pay you know, whatever they can to get their hand on it. So until it happens, it hasn't happened. Once it happens, it's too late. So from your analysis, when do you think gold is going to all of a sudden go vertical? At what point in well, time? Well, I think the stock, uh, I actually was expecting the markets, I was expecting gold might explode um, last month and it did take off. See, it's, it's gone to, like you said, um, we had a flag formation and broke out. We had a pennant formation and broke out. So it's made two higher highs or two higher steps. But now it pulled back again and it's about to take it out again. So it, it's, it's, it's like it's a spring that's building up. Okay. All above the 50 day moving average. So yeah, the 50 day moving average is solid support and it just keeps building pressure. And that's all into a point. And then it blows. And that's what's happening right, right now. And, and, and when silver does the same thing, that, and then, so I believe the markets might actually be the trigger now, um, that we haven't exploded as of yet. So the markets might collapse first. Then gold and silver will rise from the ashes and everybody will want it, but it won't be, but within a day or two, it'll be all gone. So it could be something like that. You know, I, I'm just, I'm just trying to look at cycles and see how it could play out, but, but it'll be, all I know will be very quick. It all, it all just happens in a matter of, days possibly like it'll be something like that so while the market's coming down gold is going vertical <clears throat> what happens to the dollar at this point i mean where where, where are we going to see the dollar go well remember, okay well the dollar um i've been very bearish on the dollar since i was in singapore not this year but last year when i was on stage we it was pie and then this was i was i was in asia and <laughs> singapore and it was pi, 3.1415, March 14th, 2015. And I was on stage and I said, gold, I mean, the dollar top today. Nobody believed me. It's low, it's lonely at the top or at the bottom sometimes, you know? You're, you're, you know, it's like, you know, you're radically, you're first you're ridiculed, then you're, then it's, then it's radically debated, which is where gold's at right now, you know, it's like, you know, and then, and then when it crashes, it's accepted as reality. And so the dollar, that, that was the top. We've been right ever since. It's never gone higher than three than on the date on, on March 14th of 2015. It's gone down, went in a channel, and now it's and now I've been it's been dropping down. And then so go check the go the dollar charge. What I didn't bring here, but basically last August of 2015, 
the dollar dropped for three or four solid consecutive days with the world markets. The dollar has been falling, the world markets are rolling over, and the dollar and the stock markets will collapse together. So what you're saying, the collapse is not going to be in the fall, but before that time period, like early summer. Before, before summer or into summer. And by the fall, it's over. You know, and, and if the price points don't hit, let's say the Dow only drops X amount, then eventually, you know, when that time point hits we have, well, then, then the bear cycle's over, and then, then it's going to start going up again. You know, for So maybe they did hold it up, but I don't think so. All I'm seeing is that it's just, you know, the, the patterns are still looking very ugly, and when you have gold explode in price, there's a reason why it did it, right? Like, why else would gold explode unless there's a reason? So the charge is saying a price explosion, but why did gold do that? Why are people, why is the world, why is there a gold fever? And, and, the, and the, pre, the people don't understand because they're like waiting, well, you know, in 2001, it took four years to crash. In 2007, eight, it took two years to crash. So if we get signs of it, I'll get out. You do have signs. I just showed everybody a 20-year triple top, a two-year triple top, and now in the past three weeks, we had a head and shoulders form on the, on the world markets. So you're, so you're saying it's just going to drop and... Yeah, so if, if you're waiting for a confirmation, like this is going to be, you know, let's, let's see a drop, you know, 500 points or 1,000 points and then I'll get out. I, you may not see it. You might just drop several thousand points right off, right off the start. I don't know how aggressively it drops. Honestly, I don't know. But, you know, it, to hit a price target of even 12,000, it would have to drop substantially just to get to that point on, on the Dow, right? And so all I know is to me, like I tell subscribers, it's more important is the time aspect of something versus the price of something. Or we are tied up in, in the concept of price all the time. But the moment you start applying cycles, remember, when I called the gold top, I didn't know it was $1,923. I knew that it was going to be a pro very close to, or to the day, 1,267 days from the top in 2008. The price just happened to be the price. Just like when gold dropped to $1,045, I didn't know the price target specifically. I could have guessed using Fibonacci's, but I knew, but the, from the day time point, I had a cycle low coming in on the 23rd, on, on the 3rd of December. And, it, and then you watch it drop, you see it hit a cycle low of 1045, and then that day I said, well, that's probably the low, and, it, and it, because the day is, because the time expired. And so until the time expires on this world market collapse, you know, sitting in the markets, is, is, you know, it's, it's, it's insane, especially if you don't have any gold and silver to, to protect you. Bo, thank you very much for being on the X-22 Report Spotlight. Can you tell everyone a little bit more about where they can find your work? Yeah, I do, I do several things. You know, we, uh, we've got a, a stock index, which covers the cycle. So the charts that I showed you, um, I include those charts, but also there's time points that, that we provide. So, you know, if, if, you know, for traders and people who are really interested, you know, the traders specifically, we, the time points are very important. And we do have very specific time points for, go, uh, for the stock market right now for this, for this, for this crash, uh, when we actually expect it. Um, and then for the, for gold and silver, we have a very specific, we have gold and silver, we have what's called a gold index. There covers the gold pattern, the gold cycles, and I can include those charts that I've talked about and a bunch more. And specifically, we also give time points for, you know, the, for the near months and for, you know, later this year into next year. Uh, and then for the, you know, people who are very aggressive in the trading, we have what's called, you know, a turn date service, which actually I put out every day. And that actually gives the, that I give the actual cycle that's playing on gold and silver, and you can watch it move, uh, you know, th throughout the cycles. Um, and, you know, so, so three different things that we offer, but bottom line is, you know, it's just uh, the information I provided you today to, to your readers, you know, I don't know who else has done something like that, but, you know, you, you go back and you look at that and, every, and you listen to these analysts who, who give you information about what they see in the economy. I illustrated today with charts for you, you know, and, and. And not one of them can be broken or could be, you can, you can, you can argue, but you'll be wrong in everything because every chart that I illustrated to you, they're correct. There, there, there's not one, there's not one wrong thing in those charts. Bo, once again, thank you very much for all that information. Thank you for being on the spotlight. David, thank you for having me. Have a great day.
regard to the economy, the issue is it's not, we talked about a crash. Well, it's because the market has gone sideways up and down, but basically it hasn't been crashing. Um, we are looking starting at April, March into April, the market was supposed to be rolling over. And instead, it's been supported and it's been, been held up. That creates a problem, a very big problem, because it takes the word crash out of the picture and it puts the word collapse in. So because the time patterns don't change, now the I'll show you, some, show you some charts in a few minutes, but what happens is, is time points don't change. It's a matter of how it gets there. And so what ends up happening, it's going to be very terrible for the U.S., economy for the people of the US and mostly for the people of the world because it's going to come so quickly that no one's going to be prepared for what's about to happen. That's the problem I see. It's not going to be just a crash where it keeps crashing down. It just collapses. It's like the Twin Towers. All that's left is dust. And, so and you're saying this time we're not going to have this step-down approach where yes. it continually falls. Yeah. You're You're saying that this is going to come straight down. Now, last time you told us about QE4, where the Fed is going to implement QE4, is this still going to happen with QE4? Well, QE4 is going to still hit. I, I still believe that's going to happen. It's just not yet. The time pattern, first you have to have the collapse. And I, it was supposed to be crashes down. And so what we've had, and let me, let's step back and look at this for a second. Let me just show you some charts and then we can start with that and then you can kind of, we can progress as we go. I don't know if you can see this, but here, here's, uh, here's a, a chart, which I gave to my, you know, this is a subscriber from the uh, chart from subscribers. And I, I took out the details of the time points, but what we're looking at, there's 20 years. Okay. So let's step back and look at it. This is 20 years. Hits are going to collapse. And we're on the verge of it. We're not, I've done a video before, we're not months away. We're not weeks away. David, this is around the corner. It's going to be bad. And I wanted to, before you ask the last question, this is a critical chart here. This is called, this is where, see, cycles give me something that nobody in the world has. It gives me direction when you look at a chart. So, so you look at this and you say, okay, well, those are technical charts. But what, what is the direction? So you look at a cycle because you can see forward. You, you can see what's going to happen because you know the cycle, which direction the cycle goes. So you know if the cycle is going to go up or down. That's what a cycle tells you. Okay. So then we're going to take the cycle up. We're going to look at the cycle. But now this is really cool. This is, remember the chart pattern I showed you of the, of the 20 years, the, the, the 20 year chart here on all the world markets. Okay. So we're, we're going to take that. And then we're going to, there's what's called the jaws of death pattern on the Dow. This is the Dow. I don't think you might have seen this before, but I've used my videos. So this is the crash of 2001 to 2004. How long did that take? Approximately th three years. Okay. And then, then we went up and then we, then we crashed into approximately two years. It rose back up into the top, the top that we call the exact day on the July on the July twentieth, and from that date the markets collapse. Markets have been rolling over, rolling over. So Apple, who we just showed you, everybody's sitting about here. The problem is, it's supposed to happen in less than a year. So, so you're saying it's coming very soon, right? So, so here the one thing that that cycles don't give me, David, are price projections. So I have to use chart patterns. To project how low it could go. So the Dow, you know, a target for the Dow is twelve thousand, possibly from where it is today, to a minimum of six thousand. And what we're looking at here, so we got the Dow, Nasdaq, London, Switzerland, Canada, and Germany. Okay. The point is, what do you see there, David? What, what do you what do you see? Do you see see the one, two, three? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so. You can't say that markets are not tied. They're all tied together. All the world markets have three tops. Step back at this. Look, tw this is 20 years. Now, I see that we hit the three tops. Okay, well, no, we hit it. So when I did the interview. So we with, hit the top and it's right, coming down. Right. So when I did an interview with, with, uh, with True News on, on the 20th of July of 2015, that was a cycle high for the, for the, I think it was like, uh, the NASDAQ. We called the exact day. Uh, the, the Dow topped a little earlier, but it doesn't matter. It's just, it was right, but the NASDAQ top was the exact day, but based on our cycle counts, we were using the NASDAQ. But from that time point, 
we've had, now let's look at this a little further. Okay, so that was a 20 year cycle, right David? Now let's zoom in, here's two years. Okay, so let's look again, same charts. We've got the Dow, NASDAQ, London, Switzerland, Canada, Germany. Same charts. What do you see? What do you see, David? So I see pretty much the same thing. I see the three points and we are at the top again. Right. So you'll see that last point number three, which is right there. Am I correct? Yeah. On point number three, you'll see that that's over here. And then you see another one right over there. Point three basically shows you that that was July of last year, 2015. Okay. And so all that's happening is the markets are rolling over. Okay. That's all that's been going on is the markets have been making lower highs. That's a bear trend. There is nothing bullish about this, about any of the world stock markets. Okay. So when you have it, and those are what called triple tops. As a trader, David, you know, what is a triple top? You either on a triple top, you either succeed on a low. Now, could it go to 6,000? Maybe. I, I don't know. But I look at it's like, is rather than it rolling over and making look like this on the way down, it's been holding. And what happens is you still have a cycle. So when we've done an interview with Greg Hunter, with you, all I knew was that I still, from that interview time point, we had a low time point and we haven't reached that time point. And no, it, actually, you said it was in the fall. It's not in the fall. And by the fall, it's all over. So all of this is over by the fall. And if you look at that time projection from July to July, we're about a year and we're in May right now. So you're saying it's going to come straight down soon. Right. This is, and, and so it's like the Twin Towers just collapse. And then when all that's left is dust. So while all this is happening, where is the price of gold going to go? Because right now we know that JP Morgan Chase, we know that Goldman Sachs, they were bearish on gold. Now they switch their position, they're bullish on gold. So what price are we going to hit when this happens? Well, better question is to look back at the cycle like I illustrated to you. Again, I can't project price, but I can tell time, project the time points like I just illustrated, okay? So until my time points arrive into this summer, you better be careful to sit in that market right now anywhere in the world. It's extremely dangerous because the time point hasn't arrived yet and the chart patterns, so the patterns we use, are couldn't be uglier. And everything I just illustrated going back 20 years and two year and three year patterns and everything I showed you, show me where we're, where we're wrong. That's a bear trend. Lower high, low, triple top and bear, triple top, triple top on the, on the 20 year, triple top on the two year, and lower lows, lower lows everywhere. What is gold? The best word over all the, and what does it do? It goes higher. But if it fails, it collapses. Okay? So there's a, there, so there you go, triple tops. Okay? So, so now you've got triple tops on the 20 years and on the two year. Now, so we've got, so now let's look at what's the one of the biggest stocks in the world? Uh, Google. Apple. Yeah, Google, I just heard Apple, that they right? uh, passed Apple. Yeah, they're both the same. They're both big. Both the same. So, so I, so let's, I did this just for you because I wanted to show you and your readers, but check this out. Here's Apple. What is that? That's three years. Okay. All right. So this, this was last year. One, two. What does that say, David? Three. That's right. Look at the bottom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So we have triple top failure. And then this was when we, this is the top we called for the NASDAQ. And that was last July. Markets collapsed into August of 2015. We had a cycle low in August. And then what happened? Well, the Shemitah was here. Everybody thought the markets would collapse. And guess what happened? We had an up cycle. So we knew Shemitah of 2015, which of the biblical, you know, everybody's expecting a market crash never happened. Why? Because the smart, the cycle from August of 2015 into November was an up cycle. But what is that, Dave? Look at that red arrow. That's a, what, a bearish lower high. You, you got it? Bearish, bearish lower high. Drop into another bearish lower high. And then today, Apple had uh, a terrible report. 
And guess what happened? Apple dropped today, and it actually took out the August low of last year. It took out the August low, okay? This is not going to be pretty. The market